Welcome to the part one of our series on the unjust deaths of 100 African Americans by police. In this series, we delve into a painful reality that has haunts the African American community. It is a story of injustice, racism, and discrimination that has persisted throughout history. From the early days of slavery to the present, police brutality against black individuals has been a harsh reminder of the deep-rooted prejudices that plague our society. This series aims to shed light on the lives tragically cut short, on the families shattered by loss, and on the systemic failures that allowed such violence to occur, to honor the black men and women who lost their lives in this senseless violence. We will tell their stories and remember who they were. So, here are the names and stories of the 100 African Americans who unjustifiably lost their lives due to encounters with the police. Before we get right into the video, please smash the like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on the other parts of the series. Number 100, Irvo Otieno, March 2023. Irvo Otieno, referred to as Ivor by his family, was a 28-year-old man born in Kenya. He experienced mental illness during his last year of high school and had previously received mental health care. Despite his special condition, Otieno could not escape the cold hands of police brutality. On March 3, 2023, police were called to a home in Henrico County for a reported breaking and entering, where a woman told police she believed her home was burglarized. Police arrested Otieno at the scene and placed him under an emergency custody order. He was taken to Parham Doctors Hospital for an inspection, where he allegedly became combative towards officers before being transported to Henrico County Jail. Three days later, on March 6, deputies transported Otieno to Central State Hospital. It was during the intake process that Otieno would meet his end. According to police report, Otieno became combative during the admission process, forcing the deputies and hospital employees to restrain him, leaving him limp and lifeless during the scuffle. It was only after he laid on the ground for about 20 minutes was when resuscitation efforts were implemented. With Otieno confirmed dead, the deputies and hospital employees would wait until three and a half hours to report the incident. His handcuffs were removed and washed, and a call was made to a funeral home instead of the medical examiner's office in an effort to cover up the case. A preliminary auto spy would later reveal that Otieno was smothered to death. In response, seven Henrico County deputies involved in the case were charged with second-degree murder as well as three hospital employees. The story remains that Otieno was held down and excessively restrained to death when he should have been provided medical help and compassion. It is tragic that yet another life has been lost to this malicious and deadly restraint technique and once again a chilling example of police brutality towards African Americans. Number 99, Timothy McCree Johnson, February 2023. What would have been an everyday act of shoplifting would be the kick to the bucket for Timothy McCree Johnson, an African immersion that met his untimely end at the hands of trigger-happy police officers. On February 3, 2023, loss prevention officers responded to the Nordstrom at the Tyson's Corner Center shopping mall in Fairfax County, Virginia, for a report of a man suspected of having stolen designer sunglasses. Officials found Johnson on the crime scene who fled when approached. Sergeant Wesley Shiflett and another officer would chase after Johnson who ran through the parking garage and lot into the nearby woods, ignoring police commands to get on the ground. While in the wooded area, Body camera video showed both officers discharging their firearms, striking Johnson in the chest. He would be pronounced dead at the hospital. Despite an extensive search, investigators never found a weapon from Johnson at the scene, which goes to show that the officers had no actual reason for fire at Johnson during the chase. While Sergeant Wesley Shiflett would lose his job at the Fairfax County Police Department, he would walk as a free man after ending the life of an unarmed black person. The police went even further to try to paint Johnson as the villain, claiming he had an extensive criminal history that was very well known to law enforcement in the area. This act to villainize his story and make him seem like an armed criminal goes to show how far the police is willing to go to ensure they never take accountability for the unjust ending of black lives. Number 98, Alonzo Bagley, February 2023. The story of Alonzo Bagley goes to show how the police act as judge, jury, and executioner in a split second. The story unfolds with two police officers, including former officer Alexander Tyler, responding to a domestic disturbance call at an apartment complex in Shreveport, Louisiana. 
When the officers arrived, footage from police body-worn cameras shows Alonzo Bagley meeting them at the door, then walking through the apartment saying he is going to put his dog up. He then heads out a back door and jumps down from a balcony and flees. The officers then began chasing him. At this moment, Officer Tyler would consider putting an end of the chase with the pull of the trigger. Officer Tyler observed Mr. Bagley and fired one shot from his service weapon, which struck Mr. Bagley in the chest as he turned around. A full body search revealed that Bagley had no weapons in his possessions and therefore did not pose a threat that would require a bullet. Today, former Officer Tyler has resigned from the Louisiana Police Department and has been charged with negligent homicide in the death of Alonzo Bagley. Number 97. Tyre Nichols, January 2023. The killing of Tyre Nichols remains of the most brutal displays of hate and power from the police. While many African Americans would believe that a white cop is more likely to pull the trigger on a black man, Tyre Nichols would meet his end at the hands of his own race. Tyre DeAndre Nichols, a 29-year-old who worked at FedEx, was the father of a four-year-old boy. The youngest of four siblings, he was especially close with his mother. He has been described by friends and family as joyful and spiritual, and he was an avid skateboarder and photographer. On the night of January 7, 2023, Nichols was returning home from a suburban park where he had taken photos of the sunset. On the way home, he was stopped for reckless driving, according to the initial statement from the Memphis Police Department. As officers approached Nichols to arrest him, a confrontation occurred and Nichols ran away. He would be later arrested during a second confrontation. Following the arrest, the police lied that Nichols complained of having a shortness of breath, at which time an ambulance was called and he was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Nichols would succumb to his injuries three days later. While this side of the story made it seem like an unfortunate event, footage from police body cameras and street surveillance cameras tell a different story. They show officers first removing Nichols from his vehicle after pulling him over, an initial struggle when Nichols breaks loose and runs away from the officers, and then disturbing images of Nichols being restrained and beaten by five officers at an intersection. The four videos released show Nichols being kicked and punched in the head while being restrained, pepper sprayed, and struck multiple times with a baton. The first body camera video shows a police officer approaching a car with his gun drawn while Nichols is being forcibly pulled out and pushed to the ground by another officer. In the video, Nichols tells the officers he was just trying to get home. The officers continue to push him to the ground and an officer pulls a taser stun gun and points it at Nichols' leg. Another officer pepper sprays Nichols before he breaks loose and runs down the street. The second video, taken from an elevated street surveillance camera, shows officers restraining and beating Nichols at a different location, a suburban intersection. Two officers are shown holding Nichols on the ground when a third officer approaches and kicks Nichols in the face. A fourth officer with a baton also beats Nichols, hitting him in the back. Nichols stands up and stumbles while being held by two officers when another one punches him in the face several times until the blows make Nichols collapse. The other three videos are no better, showing how the officers brutalized an unarmed man for no crime whatsoever. In response to his violent arrest and death, five black Memphis police officers involved in the beating would be charged with murder. Number 96, Keith Muriel, December 2022. Just hours before the dawn of 2023, Keith Muriel would meet his end while in custody of three now former Jackson police officers. On December 31, 2022, now former officers Kenya McCarty, Avery Willis, and James Land were called to a scene by hotel security after Muriel had been repeatedly asked to leave for allegedly harassing people in the parking lot. Muriel would not make it out alive. During his confrontation with the officers, police body camera video showed Muriel on the ground pleading with Jackson police officers to stop tasing him. His cries went unheard. The footage contained instances of Muriel being tased dozens of times as he screamed and said the same statement over and over again, man, stop, including a 10 minute span where the stun gun was used at least 26 times on the 41 year old black man. While police officers would claim that Muriel's death was due to a medical related accident, the released footage exposed the truth. Muriel's death was simply due to an excessive use of force and a display of the brutality of the police when it comes to black lives. The three Jackson police officers involved would be indicted on murder and manslaughter charges. Number 95. Kiaza Miller, November 2022. 
On November 10, 2022, police were called to Kiaza Miller's home on the city's west side in Detroit to distressed mother who had hoped to save her grandchild. However, this action would lead to a bitter end. Her family called 911 because Miller, who had schizophrenia, was having a mental health crisis and was acting erratic and violent. She also allegedly injured her young son. Police were told that Miller had weapons inside the home. They made contact with her multiple times during the incident and at one point even entered her home. That is when and where she was killed. Police Chief James White said she had a gun and when several officers entered and saw the struggle, four shots were fired, killing the woman. However, this couldn't be farther from the truth. Her family said Miller was not armed when police tackled and shot her. According to them, she was holding her phone while on Facebook Live, not a gun. There was no evidence from the police indicating that Miller had a gun during the altercation, which goes to show how far the police is willing to go to fabricate a story to justify their unprofessionalism and acts of violence. Shortly after Miller was killed, two officers and supervisor were suspended and another supervisor was put on desk duty. However, Miller's family are demanding compensation in a $50 million lawsuit against the Detroit Police Department. Number 94, Genesis Hicks, September 2022. The death of Genesis Hicks proves that the police do not need guns to put an end to a black life. For Hicks's family, September 29, 2022, would be one of the most tragic days of their lives. Like every other story that involves a black death due to the brutality of the police, Hicks was everything but a threat. The story unfolds with Frisco officers being called to a car dealership after a complaint Hicks tried to use a fake ID to buy a vehicle. Hick ran from the officers who attempted to tase him and bring him down. An officer attempted to tase him and failed. A second officer then tased him, causing him to fall and hit his head. This head injury would cost Hicks his life two weeks later. Like other stories of unarmed blacks being killed by police, the Frisco police did not accepting any responsibility for the involvement in his death. Number 93, Raymond Chalouisson, July 2022. On July 21, 2022, 18-year-old Raymond Chalouisson was playing with a toy water gun, spraying people with water, when NYC corrections officer decided to pull the trigger on him and cover up the story. Correction officer Dion Middleton would gun down Chalouisson as he sat in the passenger seat of a silver Acura. His offense was holding a water pellet gun and participating in what can be described as harmless fun. Middleton would fail to report the shooting and death of the teenager until he was arrested. Following his arrest, he would cook up a story claiming that the gel blaster did hit him in the back, and when he fired the killing shot, he had not realized he had hit anyone as the car drove away. Fortunately, his story didn't sell, and he was indicted in August 2022. Number 92, Jalen Walker, June 2022. The killing of Jalen Walker would go down as one of the most chilling cases of injustice against black lives in American history. On June 27, 2022, in Akron, Ohio, police officers would shoot Jalen Walker, a 25-year-old unarmed African-American in what seemed to be a simple foot chase. Following a traffic stop and car chase, footage showed an officer saying that Walker's car is slowing down, having reached speeds of more than 50 miles per hour in residential neighborhoods. Seconds later, Walker, wearing a ski mask, exited the vehicle and began to flee on foot. Officers chased Walker and attempted to stop him with a stun gun, but were not successful. After about 10 seconds of chasing Walker, eight police officers opened fire for six or seven seconds, shooting approximately 90 rounds. Autopsy results showed that Walker's body was hit by more than 46 bullets, which would end his life. Following the shooting, Walker was put in handcuffs by police who decided to make the arrest rather than administer first aid. The EMTs that arrived would pronounce Walker dead at the scene. Further investigation showed that Walker had no firearm his possession and once again a black person was the victim of a brutal police confrontation that has no value for human life. Number 91, Jalen Randall, April 2022. In an act that would be described as racially motivated, Jalen Randall would have his life snuffed out by Houston police officers in what would have been a simple arrest. On April 27, 2022, the Houston Police Department's narcotics tactical team was looking for Randall, who was wanted on three felony warrants. He had been charged with aggravated assault of a family member, evading arrest and being a felon in possession of a weapon, and for allegedly hitting his girlfriend and pointing a gun at her. Officers saw Randall get into the passenger seat of an SUV 
and pursued the vehicle for about half a mile, during which Officer Prevett can be heard on body-worn camera footage discussing Randall. After officers stopped the SUV with a tactical maneuver, both Prevett and Randall emerged from their vehicles. The footage released after the shooting shows Prevett command Randall to show his hands and open fire as the last words leave his mouth, striking Randall in the neck. About two seconds elapsed between the time that both men exited their vehicles and Prevett pulled the trigger. While this might seem like a clear case of murder, Officer Prevett would not be charged with the senseless death of Jalen Randall, continuing the injustice that plagues the U.S. court system. These stories only scratch the surface of what has been police brutality and senseless violence towards black individuals. Right now, we need to hold the police accountable for what they did. We have to challenge the way things are and fight against the unfairness that still exists. We owe it to the people we lost to remember them and make sure their stories are heard. In the next part of this series, we will continue to share the stories of more African Americans whose lives were unjustly taken and their voices silenced. As always, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to our channel and share our videos to let more people know the truth about blacks and to hear their own part of the narratives. Thanks for watching.